Well, Sweet Baby Inc. is in the news again, but this time it's because shareholders are bringing them up in meetings. Well, another article from that park place, I can't help but to go to this site for coverage of this because not many people are talking about it at the moment. But before we get fully into the article, subscribe. Do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 3,000 subscribers at this point, and that would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe to the channel. Square Enix shareholders questions companies about Sweet Baby Inc.'s involvement. I actually saw this on Twitter, uh, so it just happened to be that they made the article on it before I can make the video on this situation. So what's going on here is someone that sat or understood in Japanese the shareholders meeting and it was asked, it was asked of them about Sweet Baby Inc. So Mish Shuzu is their Twitter handle. They're in Japanese. I don't know what it actually translates to, but through the use of Google Translation and that part plays doing the work that I could do quite easily, but it's in there very easily for me. Question, I personally happy about the shift of and quantity to quality. I hope good titles can come out in the future. I'm concerned about the Canadian consulting company, Sweet Baby. Square Enix is listed as a client, but it is actually a transaction there. What kind of transaction is it? Will they continue to do so in the future? And then the president, uh, Takishikuru, responded with, I would like to refrain from making specific comments about individual clients as we shift from quantity to quality, providing content that is enjoyable and safe for our customers is also part of what makes a product fun. We will do best as creators. So it's a very vague statement. And because this is the president, he obviously cannot comment on this type of thing. But what this tells us is shareholders are aware what is going on here with Sweet Baby Inc. and other narrative designers out there in the games industry. All the noise, all everything that has happened out here in the real world has now come to fruition. We now know shareholders are thinking about these things, seeing these things, and the direction that the industry is taking as a whole is now being affected by it all. And thus, people are now asking very important questions at this point. What are these companies going to do about this situation? Where is it going to go? It is there going to be changes to the game industry as a whole? Now you can see by the graphic here, all the studios, this is listed on Sweet Baby Inc's own website, all the studios that are in there, and you can see Square Enix is listed, Ubisoft, you have uh, Valve in here, Xbox Studios, Wizards of the Coast, Remedy, you have everyone that is anyone in and around the games industry. This is why it's brought forward. Avalanche Group Studios recently had layoffs. So there's a lot of questions that are being asked right now, especially studios that have Sweet Baby Inc. involvement. You have this common denominator, which is Sweet Baby Inc. So now you have to ask the questions. Is this company actually doing what they're supposed to be doing by rewriting stories in a narrative design? But are those stories something compelling that people want to watch, people want to play? Or is it something that they are using as a method to shoehorn in other things for a narrative that is just false? They're trying to put in more diversity into these games, but by doing so, they're actually leading to less diversity and less inclusive. And you have people coming out with statements saying, well, this game wasn't made for you. Well, wasn't games made for everyone involved? Wasn't that the whole idea? That's what we fell in love with for video games, for animes, for movies, is the concept of it and why it resonated with everyone. Because it wasn't about, oh, you, if you don't like this game, well, you have to feel bad for yourself and you got to buy it anyway. That's the problem that we're seeing within the industry. And I've seen it playing Magic the Gathering. I saw it for a very long time. And recently in the new Dungeons and Dragons books, it is all over their new product. And it's just, it's horrendous. 
there's some very, very telling mistakes that I may do in a future video. And just to remember here, all of this was brought up all of this came to the forefront for shareholders, for everyone now, because this group came together and Sweet Baby Inc. employees tried to get it to shut down, having a Streisand effect on everything. The group Sweet Baby Inc. detected, I'm trying to name it DEI, D, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Detected, uh, is now over 400 thousand people following this group they do have one game listed here that is free of this type of stuff and it, it's being recommended the great rebellion rebellion which i believe is a game that actually was banned in germany because it didn't give two craps and really memed on what was going on with the world today i you know it, it's kind of like us playing the alex jones game out there it was absolutely ridiculous in itself and there's no reason to ban these games and of course this does make sense for square enix to try and hush it out but for the shareholders to step up and say listen this is costing us money what is going on and mostly because of what happened with Forspoken. Uh, this line of questioning also comes in the wake of Square Enix working with consultancy group Black Girl Gamers on their Forspoken game. Forspoken was a massive flop and resulted in Square Enix shutting down the game's developer Luminous Productions and absorbing it into Square Enix. And they announced they, they shut the doors back in February 2023 with the statement that you can see here. Really, I think the shareholders at this point should be Worried. I think the shareholders are the ones that are going to be able to change the tide of what's going on in the games industry. And maybe we can return to form. Uh, maybe we can have games come out that just don't care anymore that are made for everybody again, instead of it being a narrative focused design that absolutely discourages people from having an individual self identity in these video games. Making the game for one person is fine, but you know that audience that you're making it for will detract. There won't be a giant audience for it anymore. And if you make it for everybody out there, then what's the problem? These games aren't being made for everyone and the games that are failing, falling flat on their face, you're, we're being told that it's your fault as the audience for not supporting these games. Well, where does this leave us? This leaves us with more questions than answers. Will this change the way companies are perceiving and using narrative design companies like Sweet Baby Inc? Are they going to take a step back and go, wait a second, we don't need sensitivity readers because that's what this is when it comes down to it. There's sensitivity readers trying to dictate to these companies that if they don't portray everyone in a certain way that the stereotypes are going to take over they're not it's called good storytelling and the good storytelling is being erased and replaced by these narrative designers and these sensitivity readers that are too scared for a game to sit there and go out on a limb and maybe offend someone once in a while there's nothing wrong with taking a little offense to these types of things in video games it makes for a good compelling story and one that people will remember. But right now, everyone just remembers how bland and how useless these stories are and how much garbage is being fed into them. And money is being spent on these things instead of spending on, on optimization of video games, making games better, making graphics better, and making them run seamlessly on a normal system. Anyway, I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix in the Shadow. I'm signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.